okay? We're going to be talking about what do you see when you look in the mirror, all right? And this is something we're going to be, uh, it's in the Bible. So anyway, the very first verse I want to share, you don't have to turn there. I'm only reading two verses. First, let's start with some prayer. I don't want to forget to do that. You guys ready? Father, we thank you for tonight, for all the blessings of protection, which we already heard about. And Father God, we just ask that you be here in this message. Your Holy Spirit be here, Father God, and you speak through me, Father God. I pray for all the men, women, and children in this room, Father God, that this word edifies and encourages and strengthens and even corrects if need be, Father God. Father, surround us with your holy angels and protect us, precious God, and watch over us, Father God. We give you all the glory. You are holy. You are precious. You are our Father. We await you, Father God, when you return. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody said amen. 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 And the dream I had this week was there was this guy who had broken into Food Land Market where I used to live at. And I had showed up with some other cops and he took off running, but this dog took off after him named Moshe, which is Moses. Moshe, he took off after the guy and bit him. I ended up catching the guy and hooked him up and took him to jail. Well, while I was at the jail, I walked into the sales and I could see all these guys standing in the cells in front of these mirrors, but they had demons behind them. They had demons standing behind, like the guys who were walking around inside the jails. And so I walked in and started casting out devils and talking with the guys. And I had many other dreams this week, but my main focal point I want to focus on is some scriptures where it talks about our reflection. Not everything is caused by the devil. Not everything is. A lot of times there's things that we could see in the mirror when we see ourselves, but it's not really a, a true perception. There might be some deception going on there within ourselves we don't want to see or agree to. And yes, we're made in the image of God. We're going to find out. I'm going to read those things. And so in your Bible, it says in Genesis 1, I want to get this out there first. In Genesis 1, 26, then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle over all, the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over it. Anyway, we are made in the image of God, are we not? Yes. We're going toward perfection when Christ returns, but nobody's perfected here, right? Would you guys agree? We live in a fallen state, we live in a fallen world, but that's not an excuse not to admit when we need to deal with things. Would you guys agree? So, but tonight I thought about stopping and getting some mirrors. I was going to stop and get everybody a mirror. <laughs> But I didn't after all. I was like, well, I don't want them taking home just staring at themselves. And <laughs> I, don't want that. I don't want that. But anyway. So anyway, it says, all right, turn your Bibles to Psalm 139. Psalm 139. I messed Cody this week. He's still in Oklahoma. He should be back Wednesday or so, I hope. I pray. A safe trip. He's preaching tomorrow night. Or tomorrow morning, actually, I believe. Oh, he goes to, uh, it's a Baptist church of my cousins back there. They do Sunday mornings. Psalm 139. And Brother Lee's heading out here pretty quick to Oklahoma as well. That's a good little trip. That's a long trip, actually, a very long trip. But Oklahoma's an amazing area. If you're from there, you'll probably fit right in. You guys are Okies anyway at heart, right? So you'll probably fit right in. So Psalm 139, verse 13. Are we all there? Psalm 139, verse 13. Are we there? Psalm 139, verse 13. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. Amen? And that my soul knows very well my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret. And skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And your book, and in your book, and they were all written. The days fashioned for me. So anyway, every one of us is made in God's image. We are. But there's things that people see on the outside aren't things that are going on on the inside. Right? But God can see those things. Not all of us can. The Lord gives us discernment. But this week when I was in that cell in that dream, you know, I really, like the discernment I was getting wasn't all demon related. It was just people in general. You know, it's, it's that, having that honest 
Talk with yourselves. If there's something here, God, that's not of you, remove this, right? And we're supposed to be able to do that. It's really easy to look in our a brother's mirror and find everything wrong with them, is it not? You can walk up to your brother's mirror or sister's mirror and say, you got this, this, and this. But yourself, it's like, no, I'm perfect, right? And do we do that? Does that happen? There's people like that. There is, there is. Come on, guys, we're in church. We know this. Because Christ is going to address it here in a minute. Anyway, turn your Bibles to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Thank you. Verse 19. We're going to start in verse 19. James chapter 1, verse 19. We're going to start there. It says, Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Verse 20. All right, human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. Verse 21. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word of God has planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. Did you hear that? All right, here's the verse I'm looking for right here. Verse 22. But don't just listen to God's word. Right now, I'm preaching God's word. Some people will have it go in their ear, out the other ear, and never hear it again. In five years, they may come back, and all of a sudden, it makes sense. You need to listen to the word of God. This word will save you, protects you, heal you, corrects you. Bring increase in your, in your life to making good decisions. It'll renew you. The Word of God is powerful. Amen? But don't just listen to God's Word. You must do what it says. Do what the Word of God is telling you to do. With what? Everything. Your relationships. Your marriage. Your health. Your job. Your finances, your behaviors, your actions. Do what God has called you to do. Are we all going to walk it out perfectly? I don't think so. I don't believe so. But we're going to learn as we're going if we're humble and have an expectation to be able to look in this mirror at ourselves and say, hey, there's some things I need to deal with. There are some things I'm seeing in the mirror that I don't like and I know God sees them. And maybe other people don't see the things in the mirror, but they need to be addressed. So anyway... You must do what it says, otherwise you're only fooling yourselves. Verse 23, For if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, you walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says, you don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it, right? So if we're looking in the mirror, and there's things that I see there, what do I do? I get on my knees and I pray. And a lot of times it's hard. Why? Because of pride, huh? And you don't want to admit there's something there. There's a chink in the armor. Everybody in your life, you will have some chinks in your armor. You're going to take some hits. And a lot of the times it's not going to be the devil tempting you. It's based on your own decisions. We can't blame everything on the devil. Sorry, guys. It would be nice if we could. It's the devil's fault. No. We make... We make decisions that affect us, and when they finally get revealed, the reflection that we may have been portraying wasn't truth. It was actually things that were hidden dark secrets or other things going on, right? Right? But God can heal those things if we admit to them. First, we admit that we need God's help. First, we have to admit that we need God's help. So anyway, verse 26. If you claim to be religious but don't control your tongue, you're fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. Did you guys hear that? If you claim to be religious but don't control your tongue. And there's times, oh man, <laughs> just recently me and Patrick and uh, Manish went to get something to eat. Remember the lady that pulled up that said, hey, this is my street. Remember that? She got upset when I was making a left-hand turn there. And, you know, I didn't have any choice words for her. You know, I've got two guys from my church or I'm not going to, you know, start telling her off or anything, which I didn't. But it's, it's, we have a chance all the time to say things we would like to say, but we always don't have to say them. And, of course, in our own homes, husbands and wives, I'm sure there are things that get said back and forth, right? Occasionally when things are heated, do they not? There's something's heated, something comes out, you shouldn't have said it, you can't take it back, but you can ask for forgiveness and apologize to that person and pray to God and lift your hands, right? You can do that, can you not? Because words hurt, right? The words hurt, and words hurt you, right? They hurt both ways. They're like arrows, right? So anyway, 
If you claim to be re religious but don't control your tongue, you're fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. 27, pure and genuine in religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and windows, I'm sorry, and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. Did you hear that? Refusing to let the world corrupt you. The world can corrupt you. There's things in the world that will corrupt you. When you get it against you, you start looking at it, you start going after it. It may taste good at first, but it's destructive. It's destructive. Greed is one, right? Have we seen greedy people? We've seen millionaires win money through the lotto. Then you look online, you see all these horror stories. They lost everything. There was such a greed and just, it got crazy. There's lust, there's deception, there's lying. There's all kinds of things. There's addictions, there's all these things. But don't let the world corrupt you. And sometimes we've got to isolate from certain people because other people in your life will begin to rub off on you, will they not? Your inner circle should be people who are on the same path that you're on. They should be. And if you're chasing Christ and going after righteousness and living a godly lifestyle, your friends should be the same. They should be going after the same thing. But if you've got two friends that say, hey I'm, hey, I'm an atheist and I like to slam heroin, hang out with me. Sooner or later, somebody's going to win that one. You'll fall with him or he'll come with you, right? One of the two things is going to happen. Right? But hang around people that encourage you, that strengthen you by their walk and are also honest with you. Hang out with people who strengthen you and are honest and may even rebuke you because they love you. Right? There's nothing wrong with that. That's what a friend is, actually. That's what a friend is. And if you truly love each other, man, you'll work through it. Amen? All right, turn your Bibles to uh, Matthew 23. We're going to talk about the Pharisees and Sadducees. And we're going to talk about the look that they were portraying in the mirror to everybody else. And Christ calls them out. He calls them out in front of everybody. The Pharisee, they're, they're attorneys, they're the rich, they're powerful. They've got the status, everyone looks up to them. Here they are. They're self-righteous, self-indulgent in everything. And you look at these guys really quick. Matthew 25, verse 25. This is Jesus talking right here. He says, Once sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites. Hypocrites. He calls them hypocrites. That means to be a play actor is what it means. It means to be a play actor. For you are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are filthy, full of greed and self-indulgence. Did you hear that? On the outside, when they look in the mirror and people around them, they're seeing this outside that's shining and glowing, but on the inside they're what? He was talking to the Pharisees. What did he say about them? <laughs> you're full of greed and self-indulgence. You're, you're filthy. You blind Pharisee, verse 26, first wash the inside of the cup and the dish, and then the outside will become clean too. Did you guys hear that? Yeah. So yes, in the churches, there is a self-righteousness that's in the church. Still around today. It'll be around until the Lord returns. You know, it's awesome when someone comes up front, and they're transparent and said, hey, I've got an issue with this. This is going on. That's God. Most people don't want to share if something's going on, do they? They don't. They don't want to share that. It makes them look bad. It doesn't make you look bad. It makes you look human that you need God. And it encourages other people to ask for help as well. But if everyone has it all together, we don't need a church. There's no point in having a church. We need a Savior, do we not? Who works on things inside of us. That's what He does. He's removing those things. He's burning them out. So anyway, man, he's talking to the Pharisees here, verse 27. One sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, beautiful on the outside, but filled on the inside with dead man's bones and all sorts of impurity. Outwardly, you look like righteous people, but inwardly, your hearts are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness. Did you hear that? Think about that for a second. When we look in the mirror... Nobody wants to look at themselves. Yes, we're made in the image of God. He made us amazing. But is there things that we could work on? Come on. There's things we could personally work on. It's not everybody's fault around you. It's not the problem. We have to look inward. We can only fix. Man, I can only fix me. I can't fix you. The Lord can fix me when I call out to him and ask him. He can reveal things when I say, Lord, examine me, Father God. Show me things that I need to work on it and deal with. Mine is trust. I have issues with trust. She knows that. I have issues trusting people. Sorry, I do. And that's something I pray about all the time. 
Uh, it's gotten a lot better, way better. But that's one of those things where I come from, you know, it's... You have a question, sir? <laughs> Yeah. I've been to churches where people dress up real fancy to go to church. Yeah. And they will judge you instantly if, if you don't have on what they expect you to have on. Hundred percent. It doesn't matter what's inside. The stone save us. But but no, but they will judge you yeah. in in a second. Yeah, me and Cody were trying to rent a church many years ago down here uh Though not Moose Lodge, it's the one down there by Alta Vista by Shakey's. There's some buildings back in there. But there was this Pentecostal, Hispanic Pentecostal church. They're no longer there. They didn't last. But they had a place for rent. When we first got started, before we started here, they had a place for rent for Wednesdays and Saturdays. And we went down there to talk to them. And uh, we're going to rent it. And we showed up. And we had shorts on. We'd been out walking. Me and Cody had been out walking. We showed up with our shorts on and Jesus shirts. Probably about eight years ago, we walked in. And the pastor walked up and goes, he looked at our shorts and goes, no, get out of here. Because we walked in with shorts on. He said, no. So we were judged by having a pair of shorts on. His church is no longer there, though. But anyway, <laughs> don't look at the outside. And if you want to dress up, dress up. That's fine. I'll never tell anyone not to dress up. No one. And sometimes, occasionally I do, I wear a jacket. or And sometimes I wear some dress shoes. It's 100, about 100 degrees in here. I'm not going to wear it today. I'm not going to. It's hot. Uh, anyway. Turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. But you know what, man? People, believe it or not, the Lord has given most people discernment with, with and being able to talk to somebody else and find out like, whether they're being genuine or not. After a while, you'll be able to tell whether or not this person is genuine. They're who they say they are. Be careful of the ones that boast in themselves. Be careful of that <laughs> The ones that, hey, I got an issue going on, this is happening. All right, those are the honest ones. At least they're being honest with you. Amen? So Revelation 3, this is the very last church that's mentioned in the Bible. The church of Laodicea, the lukewarm church. So turn your Bibles to Revelation 3, verse 14, if you would, please. But I'm going to show you guys something. Revelation 3, this is a lukewarm church. They think they've got it all together. When they look in the mirror of their church, they think it's perfect, they're self-righteous, everything's good, they don't, you know what I mean? Listen, verse 14, write this letter to the angel of the church in Laodicea, this is the message from the one who is the amen. Who is that? That's Christ, amen? The faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's new creation. Verse 15, I know all the things you do, that you are neither hot nor cold, I wish that you were one or the other. But since you are lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich, I have everything I want, I don't need a thing. And you don't realize that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Did you hear that? There's a fake reassurance in things. You know what I mean? You may think you have it all together today, but there's somebody at Memorial Hospital who could be a millionaire here in town that has cancer and they're on their last day and there's nothing to save them but God. And they may have counted on their money many years and they're wondering now, hey, oh, who's going to get my millions or whatever else? Or whatever. Our focus should not be on earthly things. There's nothing wrong with having something nice. But if that's something nice, if you're a slave to it, it owns you. Right? If It owns you if you're a slave to it. Verse 18. So I advise you to buy gold from me, gold that has been purified by fire, then you will be rich. Also buy white garments from me, and so you will not be shamed by your nakedness. That's that exposure of sin. And ointment for your eyes, so you'll be able to see. He says, I correct and discipline everyone I love, so be diligent and turn from your indifference. Did you guys hear that? The Lord does correct us. That's why Jesus had to come. That fire that you're being sanctified with is all those things that aren't of Him. It's of the world He's trying to remove from you. And the Holy Spirit can do that through what? The Word of God, through prayer, through other people reading the Word with you, maybe. And sometimes even iron sharpens iron. If you have a good friend that you trust and you guys have that type of relationship, there's nothing wrong with sharing with each other, even the hard conversations. That's okay. Right? And yes, I've had many at this place. I've had people come up and tell me all kinds of stuff through the years. But you have to learn to have some thick skin. If you've got really thin skin and you're in a church, and you're dealing with a lot of broken people. 
and hurt people hurt other people, right? That's what they do. And they may say things that hurt you or affect you or whatever else. And a lot of times we just have to take it with a grain of salt. We just do. We have to pray for other people. We have to love on other people as best as we can. And sometimes it's really hard. It's, it's really hard. And nobody does it perfectly. Whether rearing a child or your marriage, it's not perfect. But you follow God, right? If the wives or husbands came up right now and could point out everything, you know, all the indifference in their, their marriage, I mean, could they do it to each other? Oh, yeah. Would you want to do that to your spouse? No, why? Because you love your spouse enough not to go up and shred them, right? And you may have an issue sometimes you ask for prayer for, but you, and you wouldn't come up here and go, okay, back in 1941, this, right? Keeping a record of wrongs and calling other people in the church and going, I need prayer for my husband. He did it again. Oh, no, kidding me. No way. <laughs> and you spread this wildfire that goes around that turns into gossip and it's the worst thing you could have done, man. You could have called and said with a personal friend, hey, this is up. I mean, someone who's going to help you and hold you up. Who's for marriage? Making it. Because if we call the world and ask for advice, oh, yeah, it's horrible. But anyway, that's just... Yeah, but listen for a second. Verse 19, I correct and discipline everyone I love. So we're all going to be corrected. If you come to God, you're going to get corrected. You need God. He doesn't need you. You need God, right? We all need God. So we're going to get corrected. I correct and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent and turn from your indifference. Look, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. And we will share a meal together as friends. Verse 21. Those who are victorious will sit with me on my throne, and just as I was victorious and sat with my Father on His throne. Amen? Anyone who has ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what He is saying to the churches. So right now, many churches have a belief that everything's cool, that they're in good standing with God. Yes, there's a grace. We're given grace by God. But it's not a sloppy grace. Some people hate that word. We don't get to walk through our life and say, hey, man, the Lord knew I was going to sin tomorrow and do this, so I will make it to get away with it. No. We reap what we sow. We reap what we sow. And there's going to be consequences. There's always consequences for good and bad. Would you guys agree? If you work hard at your job and you get a raise, right? If you don't show up on time at your job, after a while you get fired. There's consequences for everything, good and bad. The Lord's no different, but He sees everything and from a perfect standpoint, he knows all the ins and outs. He knows everything that's going on in your life. He knows why you're doing, or what you're doing, and why you're doing it, and how you're doing it, every single thing about it. And yes, he knows you're a son or a daughter. But we have to admit that we need help too. We have to admit that we need help because we're, we're broken. We are broken. Most, everybody in this room is broken, comes from brokenness. You may not admit it, but you do. Every person in this room comes from being broken. That's why you needed a Savior. And you heard His voice and you accepted it and you came. Amen? All right, turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Second Corinthians 4.4. 4. Let's look at verse number 1. It says, therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Have you guys seen people try and take the word of God to excuse their sin? Yeah. I've seen people try and take the word of God and twist it to excuse their sin. I've seen it many times. Oh, the Lord said I could do this. I'm going to do it now. He says I can't hear him. I'm like, wait a second. That's not what it says. But people will do that. They'll try and find some passage, pull it out, a context, and say, look, I can sin and get away with this. It ain't about that. It's not about that. So verse 2, But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Verse 3, but even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Here we go, you guys. Listen to this verse really quick. Verse 4. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Amen? 
So yes, there are people who are completely blinded to their behaviors. They're blinded to their sin, and they're blinded to the things they say, and they're blinded to the way they treat people. They think they're justified in their actions. They rationalize sin. They're completely fine with everything they do. Right? If they're in your friend circle, and you guys are walking together as brothers, as sisters, if you have that closer relationship, you guys talk and sit down and talk with each other. There's a gentle way of sharing things with each other. You don't have to go up and slap them upside the head and start shredding them. We don't do that. But you can definitely sit down and talk with them and love on them, right? You not do that? Because you care about them? Anyway. Let's look at uh, verse 6. I'm sorry, verse 5. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves, and your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. For it is God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Moses, they couldn't even see his face because it was too bright. Remember then it started to leave and he had it covered up? We have a chance to see the glory of God every day inside of us. The Lord should live inside of us. He should glow inside of us. He should be bright inside of us. Right? Amen? And there's days, man, you don't feel like it, right? Yes, there is. But that's the Holy Spirit's job is to renew you day by day and strengthen you when you're weary. Your walk on this long walk of life is going to be weary at times. There's times it's hard. Sometimes it feels impossible like you're walking uphill. But you'll get to the top. You'll make it a little ways and come back down. There's sufferings in this life, man. There's a denying of self, but it's all worth it. It's all worth it. The peace of God beyond all understanding that comes, right? Amen? He shows us that peace and we're going through something. Just at the right time always. 2 Corinthians 3, 7. 2 Corinthians 3, 7. But if the ministry of death written and engraved on stone was glorious, then so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, Verse 8, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. For if one is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Where I'm trying to get to, just hang on for a second. Verse 12, therefore since we have this hope, we use great boldness of speech unlike Moses who put a veil over his face and so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away but their minds were blinded for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ right yeah. Yeah. so Christ has given us an understanding to be able to see the truth in everything we can see the truth in every single subject and everything there is we can read the Bible and line it up with scripture and whether or not it's true or not true, right? That's right? In everything. But God has given us that ability through His Son Christ. Yes, in the old days, the law showed us where we fell. The law showed us how filthy we are. But once we saw how filthy we were, we needed a Savior because we couldn't do it ourselves. Only Christ was able to walk that out. Then we came to Christ and through His righteousness, right? Through Christ's righteousness, we were saved and the chains were broken. Amen? Keep listening. Here we go. Let's look at verse 18. But we all with unveiled faces, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, man, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now think about this for a second. When I first came to God, I was a filthy mess. Adultery, alcohol. Man, my job was my idol. It was everything to me. My job, since I was a kid, it was an idol. When I came to God, I was a broken mess. The spirit of suicide, depression, anxiety. I was a complete mess. I looked in the mirror and knew I needed a savior. I knew it. I knew I wouldn't survive another day without God. But if I can't come and say that I was a mess, if I can't be transparent with my brothers and sisters and not be able to share that and I gotta hide something, you haven't met him yet. Because once you meet him and you get forgiven, it doesn't matter what anybody says. Those chains are broken. You're set free. Amen? So I want you guys to know that if there's anyone here that is hanging on to something that's been hidden, you think you have to keep this hidden because you don't want no one to know. 
God knows. Give it to him. And when you share your testimony, by sharing the truth with someone else, I mean, what are you doing? You're setting them free that it can be done. Most people won't talk bad about themselves. People who are Christians aren't boasting in their past. They're boasting in what Christ has done to get them from that past. Amen? They died to themselves. They're born anew. They're brand new. They're brand new. Their life's brand new. There's people around them who will see the difference. Those closest to them will be able to tell that there's a difference in this person. And you couldn't have got me up here 20 years ago speaking. Not at all. I wouldn't have done it. But God said, go. And I said, all right, I'll, I'll do it, Lord. Not by my will, but by yours. Amen? Let God's will be done every day in your life, not yours. Right? Is this God's will? Turn your Bible to Acts 26. Acts 26. All right. And you guys remember Apostle Paul? Saul, Paul, right? You guys remember him? Acts chapter 9 or 8, the Damascus Road, he gets knocked off his horse. This is Paul sharing this conversion, what took place and why God was calling him out. Now listen to this for a second. Listen to this. I'm going to start in verse number 12. This is Paul. While thus occupied as I journeyed to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest at midday, O king, along the road I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining around me and those who journeyed with me. Verse 14, And when we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And it is hard for you to kick against the goads. Verse 15, So I said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose to make you a minister and to witness both of the things which you have seen and the things which I will reveal to you. Keep listening. It's really important coming up in 18. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you. Here we go. Listen. To open their eyes in order to turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Did you hear that? I'm going to read it for you one more time for those who didn't get it. To open eyes. Our eyes are blind when we look in our mirror sometimes. They're blind. We're blinded by things that aren't truth. It's deception. Sometimes we deceive ourselves because we don't want to know the truth. We don't want to deal with an issue. We let it sit there and fester and it grows this giant weed. And in our life it only gets worse and it never gets dealt with. It has to be pulled from the root and pulled out. Amen? You've got to pull weeds by the root. You pull them by the top. She always tells them, don't get it by the top. It's going to grow back. You've got to get down in there. It's true. The Lord gets down in there and does that dirty work for you. And you just have to tell him there's a problem. God pulls it out. He pulls it out. You've got to admit to it. Amen? So keep listening for a second. Verse 18, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. So all these people were under the power of Satan. Every one of us at one time were under the power of Satan. We were. We lived in our sin and we're okay with it. Then something happened. We came to God and we said we're sinners. We're broken, and God, we can't make it without you, right? So everybody's born into sin. You were born into sin when you take your first breath. You're born into a fallen world. That they may receive the forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Or turn your Bibles to Ephesians 4. The one I'm, I'm really trying to get across to you guys tonight, when we look in the mirror, all of us, there's nothing wrong with going home tonight, tomorrow, Sunday, Getting by yourself in your room, in the bathroom, and standing in front of the mirror and say, Lord, examine me. Is there anything in my life, Father God? And there is. There will be something there that can be worked on. Is there anything that can be better in my life? But if we think, hey, we've already met it. We're the champions. Football teams play every year for the championship, right? They don't win it one time. They win it forever. No. Our walk is a day in and day out. So there's things that may come into your life that may be something new or it's something old or it's something that hasn't been dealt with, right? These little things need to be purged out. The Word of God will do that. And prayer will do that. Crying out to God and repenting will do that. Amen? Ephesians 4, verse 17. This I say, therefore, in testifying the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. You guys hear that? Because of the blindness of their heart. 
who being past filling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Did you hear that? Did you guys hear that? Sometimes, sometimes we have these blind hearts. Our heart is blind. We have, you know, like Brother Manny would say, we have, we have hidden blind spots. Sometimes we've got hidden blind spots and things that need to be dealt with. And most of the time we already know them, don't we? We don't have to someone walk up and say, hey, you've got a demon. No, there's something that needs to be dealt with. There's something that needs to be addressed. Something that needs to be dealt with. And yes, my blind spot, she points out for me, and I point out hers occasionally. <laughs> we're married. You know, there's times. We're, you know, we're, we're one flesh. We walk together. If we don't come in agreement on everything, what happens? It hinders our prayers. So we got to be one flesh. And if you're single, it's just you and God. But if you're married, you have a spouse, you have one flesh. If you're not in agreement on stuff, your prayers are hindered. That's what the Bible declares. Your prayers will be hindered. So make sure that you come in agreement on all things, right? You're only as strong as your flesh, right, with you. And your wife or your husband is your flesh. So if the flesh is weak over here, the flesh is weak there on something, you guys have to come together, right? You've got to help each other get through it. Amen? Anyway, verse 18. Having their understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness and greediness. They've given themselves over to do things that God hates. They just gave themselves over to it. And does that happen with sin? Sin is not something that just happens out of the blue. Sorry to tell you guys. Sin starts with a seed that gets planted. It gets planted in your heart. Seed gets planted inside your heart, and what happens? Your seed will set there, and what? It grows, and it turns into sin. And it turns into sin. And it just didn't just happen. It was something that was there that was never dealt with. And it finally gets dealt with when? It gets exposed. And we can expose it ourselves, and repent and come before God and say, Lord, I'm looking in the mirror and this is horrible. This is what's going on, Father God. And if we can't do that, it's not going to get any better. It has to be dealt with sooner or later. Sooner than later. Here we go. Let's look at uh, verse 20. But you have not so learned Christ, verse 21, if indeed you have heard Him and have been taught by Him as the truth is in Jesus... And that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. You guys hear that? Deceit, deception. Deceit, deception is a big deal. If you go to people who aren't believers in Christ, you're going to be deceived. There's going to be deception going on. Why? Because they don't follow the truth. Everything in the light gets exposed. That's the truth. Amen? Verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Amen? Amen? Amen. Verse 25, therefore putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. I do not let the sun go down on your wrath nor give place to the devil. Did you guys hear that? Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. That's especially good on husbands and wives because it turns into concrete. It's like a hardened concrete being mixed and it's harder. But once it hardens over, overnight, the next day, the next day is like another layer of concrete. And then you got to go all the way back because there's hurt feelings now if something doesn't get resolved. And yes, we're supposed to, when we argue, yes, people are going to argue. If you're married, oh, I've heard people tell me, I haven't I never argued. You're going to argue. It's part of being married. You're going to come to disagreements on things. It's going to happen. But there's a way to do it fairly with each other, right? You don't get to go, hey, I'm never going to talk about this. Let's just leave it alone. There's things that need to be addressed. Whether or not today, tomorrow. Pick out a time. It needs to be addressed. You can't run from it. There's things that need to be addressed in our relationship with God. They have to be addressed. And sometimes the Lord, He will hammer you Himself. If you don't get to it, He'll deal with it. And you won't like when He deals with it. Because He'll put a heavy fear into you. <laughs> You don't want that, but he will occasionally. Here we go. Verse 28, let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, one is good that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but one is 
good for necessary, sorry, necessary edification, and then may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. And yes, as Christians, there will be people in the church who are going to take advantage of you. There are people who are going to lie to you. There are people who are going to use you, right? Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Those will pop into your mind. And if you start getting angry about a situation that starts to, you start to obsess a little bit about, the Lord will start putting those verses in your head. Matthew chapter 5 will start coming to pass in your heart and your mind. You're like, oh, man, I've got to pray for this person. Even though what they did was wrong, they knowingly did it to me. But I still got to pray for them, right? Does it hurt? Yes. Do we have feelings? Yes. You know, but other people do too. And I know as we get older, it's hard to accept responsibility for any situation. We want to be right, right? We want to be right. We're not always right. Sorry, guys. I got to break the bubble. We're not always right. You're not always right. I'm not always right. You're not always right. You want to be, but you're not. And only God is always right. Amen. That's God's job, not ours. But we see that a lot in circles in the church. People don't want to be wrong. You know what? Every day I do the best I can do. That's what I do. I say, Lord, man, give me strength for the day. Tomorrow I'm not even going to worry about. It. Right? It has enough issues of its own, right? So our focal point should be getting along with others the best we can. But at the same time, having discernment whether or not when they're walking with the Lord or they want to walk with the Lord. There's some people who don't. They say they do, but they don't. Deep down. And those folks, men, you may have to cut some ties with them just to protect yourself. Because they will drag you off the cliff with them. Here we go. Let's look at Galatians 6. Galatians 6. Let's look at that. Galatians chapter 6. How many people in this room has been hurt by someone else in the church? Ever? In any church? You ever been hurt by what someone else has said to you or done to your family? Did you leave the church? Did you quit going to church completely? And that had nothing to do with God, did it? It happened to do with a person, right? And a lot of times you'll see people leave a church over a person. Are they going to worship people or worship God? That's the question I have for people. That's the question I have. Look in the mirror. I mean, you're not going to worship other people. Yes, you're going to fellowship. You're going to fellowship with them as best as you possibly can. But you may not always agree. You may hit heads all the time. In this little church, sometimes we may have 50 people on a good night. There's times I'm like dealing with stuff like a cop again. I'm like Mills Lane. Oh, hang on a sec. Let me talk to them. Hang on a sec. Let me. No, they didn't say that. You took it wrong. And I know. Then someone else. I heard that you're not even involved in this. Stay out. Out. You're out of it. These two, it's, we're dealing with them, right? Would you guys agree? Yes. There's times we're dealing with things in the church, but don't expect people in the church to be humble. <laughs> They're not going to be. You're running into people who are still dealing with their own issues, and you may rub each other wrong. The only person you can change is you in the mirror. That's it. You can't change that other person. You can pray for them. You can love on them. You can do the best you can do. Even as a pastor, even as a pastor, you do the best you can do. There's people I've hurt their feelings by preaching before certain words. They'll call me later and they're upset with me. And why did you say this and that scripture? Or, or you brought up a story I didn't like that was directed at me. No, it wasn't. It's happened to Cody many times. We are here with each other to walk hand in hand, right? To the finish line. We're going to go through some battles. We're going to go through tribulations. We're going to go through sicknesses. We're going to go through loss of jobs, loss of... I'm talking all kinds of stuff. COVID-19 or COVID-20, whatever's coming next. We're going to go through stuff together. And yes, yeah, some people won't like it. And some people may take it out on you or some people... But we can't have such thin skin and not realize that your fellow believers may say something that may cut you really hard. But if you're putting them up on a pedestal, you know what I mean? When you're making them an idol and everything they say is, uh-uh. It's God. We come to worship God. We don't come to worship me or Cody 
right? And anyone else in this room, the Lord gives a message for the week, that's the message we get. But I think if we look in the mirror, if we're honest with ourselves, I used to coach sports, a lot of sports, and, and even played for a lot of teams and softball and all this other stuff. And a lot of uh, people would, and couldn't believe when I'd set my kids out. I'm like, no, they're not good enough, they're not playing. And they'd be like, why? They're not good enough. I'm not going to put them on the field. They don't help the team. And it's like, but that's your son. I don't care. I'll send them home. Anything. I'm not boasting me right now, but what I'm saying, we have to look at things fairly and impartially. If you can't look at things with an impartial mind and, and your kid does something or whoever, your spouse, whoever does something, but, you don't, but if someone else would have done it, you'd have blown a gasket. But your spouse, well, I'm going to let it go. No. It's the same for everybody across the board, right? Would you guys agree? Yes. That's something as a Christian that comes with time. That's something that comes with time. Me, it's easy because I see black and white. I don't have an in-between. Most people have a gray area. I don't have one. I'm sorry. I just, who I am. I only see black and white. I don't, I don't have a gray area. Either you did or you didn't, you should stop. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not oh, okay. We're gonna, no. But I think God gives us all understanding of things, but at the same time, would you want to be forgiven for the same thing? Yes. But if someone's doing something intentionally over and over and over, then you finally have to break the purse strings and say, I'm done, right? You're not going to get along with everybody in the church. Sorry, you, you won't. But when we look in the mirror, the only person you can change is you. The only person I can change is me. All right? So pride, vanity, those things puff up. They puff up. Don't puff up. You don't want to puff up ever. So anyway, our Galatians 6, verse 1. And brethren, if a man is overtaken any trespass, you who are spiritual... Or who's spiritual in this room? Is anybody spiritual? Really? Like two people who are spiritual? Wow, man. Let me start back in Genesis and go through the Bible. <laughs> there we go. It says, You who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of one. Gentleness. Gentleness. And how would you want to be restored? Right? Considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Think about this for a second. Somebody has sinned against God and you. And you blow your gasket. And you sin against that person and another person and another person. What just happened? What just happened? Lest you also be tempted. You can have a temptation to fire into somebody else when they sin against you to deal with it because you've had enough. And then you lose your testimony because of them. And the devil got two with one, right? He got a two for one. And sometimes you've got to watch out for that, man. Somebody may show up and do something, and, and you better know ahead of time and saying, Lord, if I'm, Father, ever in a situation that this happens, give me strength to walk away and cool down. I don't want to run my testimony. You know what I mean? And that's something you have to be ready for ahead of time. Are we human? Yeah. But you have to know, and you have to have a, a plan in your head in case something happens that you're not going to, a person has sinned, you're not going to let their sin and cause you to sin, right? There was a pastor here from Florida, I can't think of his name, a big time pastor. His wife was having an affair in the church and got pregnant by some other guy. This pastor probably had, I don't know, maybe two or 3,000 people at his church. He got mad and went and slept with some other girl like the next month and lost his church. Lost his church. And one time he was on TV, he goes, I was so upset I was getting her back. Well, he got himself back. Destroyed the entire church. The devil said, thank you very much. That'll work for me. And does that happen? Nope. So we have to look in the mirror. If there's something going on, if there's just even a little anything going on in that mirror that doesn't seem right, and yes, I'm sure you could point mine out and I could probably point yours out back and go, blah, 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 right? We could bring out all of our fingers. Remember? You point one finger, there's three always pointing back at you. I used to tell people that. There's three pointing back at you when you do this. There's three pointing at you. So be very careful when you point a finger at somebody else. Right? Romans 14 always brings me back down to earth every time. When I'm upset with somebody, I go read Romans 14. That's a good book to read. When you're mad at somebody, read Romans 14. You'll find out really quick one. God thinks about you when you're trying to judge someone else. 
Right? And no, we're not judging someone else. We can warn someone else. When there's a sin deal, we can warn them and say, this is going on and it's wrong. It's disgusting. It's vile. And it's destroying our relationship together. It needs to be, it needs to stop. Right? You got to set boundaries. You got to have trust. But just remember that. Romans 14 will bring you back down really quick. So that's the one. <laughs> I always seem to end up there. I don't know what it is. I'm like, man, I didn't want to read Romans 14. It's like, I'll end up there every single time. I'm like, I don't want to read Romans 14. There it is. And I have it highlighted. So in my Bible, I can show you right now. <laughs> there are certain things. You know what? And turn your Bible to Romans 14 really quick. You guys don't even know what I'm even talking about. Romans 14. This one, is, this one here will handle you pretty quick. You guys ready? Romans 14, verse number 1. Receive one who is weak in the faith, but not to disputes over doubtful things. Don't sit and argue with somebody who is weak in their faith. They don't have the kind of faith I had if I'm going to show him what faith is, right? You're lacking in faith, right? Verse 2, For one believes he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats only vegetables. Let not him who eats despise him who does not eat, and let not him who does not eat judge him who eats, for God has received him. Who are you to judge another servant? To his own master he stands or falls. Did you guys hear that? Careful when you look in the mirror. These people can look in your mirror too. Right? Indeed. He'll be made to stand, for God is able to make him stand. Yes, God can make anybody stand. He can fix any situation and repair it. It can be repaired, but it has to be admitted to first. Verse 5, one person esteems one day above another, and another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. Don't forget that verse. Just because you believe something, and you believe it to be fact, don't try and... Convince someone else about a day or some food or something else and you guys are fighting over things that shouldn't be disputed over. Yes, Christ has to be right. We have to recognize who Christ is. His holiness, His right, and the gospel, His resurrection, Him being raised on the third day, and Him being appropriation for our sins, being seated at the right hand of the Father. Yes, that's got to be right. If somebody brings the Father without the Son or the Son without the Father, you don't even let them in your house. That's a whole different teaching. But I'm talking about disputing over things. Usually it's pride issues. Okay. He who eats, eats to the Lord, for he gives God thanks. And he who does not eat to the Lord, but he does not eat and gives God thanks. Verse 7. For none of us lives to himself, and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and rose and lived again, and that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. But why do you judge your brother, or why do you show contempt for your brother, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Did you hear that? Do we show contempt for our brothers or sisters sometime? Yep. Happens in the church all the time. It says, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather resolve this not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. Did you guys hear that? You can easily put a stumbling block in your brother's way over some kind of doctrine and they leave the church. And it had nothing to do with the gospel. Right. Had absolutely nothing to do with Jesus. This is the doctrine you may be looking at. And you, you believe with everything that you are, but you guys are fighting over it. Don't do that. You be fully convinced in your own minds, not his. He has to look in the mirror himself, not you. Or she, right? All right, guys? Here we go, verse 14. I know and am convinced by the Lord Jesus there's nothing unclean of itself, but to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Yet if your brother is grieved because of your food, you're no longer walking in love. Do not destroy with your food the one for whom Christ died. Therefore do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. Did you hear that? We're supposed to edify one another. Edify. What's that mean? That's right. Build up. 
Then most people who come to the door are pretty torn down. Some by choice, some not. Verse 20, Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for a man who eats with offense. It is good neither to eat meat nor drink wine or do anything which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. Do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. Happy is he who do, and who does not condemn himself by one he approves. You guys hear that? I don't approve of that. I don't approve of this. Well, show me the verse. Let's take a look at the verse. That'll be my first thing. Let me see the verse. Let me see it. Right? I'm not going to leave the church over it. But I would say, show me the verse. Show me the verse where it's at. Scripture and verse. So be careful. If it's not about Christ, be careful. Here we go. Where did I finish at? Was it? Okay. Pardon me? Romans 15, 22. What? That's all right. Okay, here we go. Lee's trying to throw me off. Thanks, Brother Lee. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Verse 22. It says, Do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. Happy is he who does not condemn himself in what he approves. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith. For whatever is not from faith is sin. Do you guys hear that? So if we don't have faith, if we have doubt, that's sin in God's eyes. Have we all done that? Yep. Have you all had doubt about something? Yep. Why? You start to worry about it. And what happens when you, when you get tired of worrying? You finally say, all right, Lord, take it. I'm done with it. Right? Okay. Anyway, Romans 14 will bring you back on track sometime. It's a good place to go. Let's look at... Uh, hmm. Let's look at uh, Galatians 6. I read a little bit. And for if anyone... Thinks himself to be something when he is nothing. He deceives himself. Verse 4. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. you guys hear that? Each person shall bear their own load. It's not your job to bear their spiritual load. You can pray with them. You can show them the Bible. But it's their walk. Whether they fall, get up, it's up to them to follow Christ. You can't force them, right? You can't force someone else to have a thirst for God. You can't do it. You may get upset about it, but you can't do it. You know, for instance, when I disciple other people, I may sit down with them and read with them and show them the scriptures, but it's up to them whether or not they receive it. I can't make them receive it. It's up to them whether or not they receive it, right? So anyway, last verse I wanted to look at. Let's see here. I've got uh, Romans 8.29. Romans 8.29. You guys doing all right? Yeah, if there's anything for me, it's uh, in my mirror is trust. That's my biggest issue is trust. You know, if, if we had to go around the room tonight, which we won't, and, but, and think about one thing in your life that you know if you looked in the mirror and that needs to be changed. Mine is trust. What about you guys? If you went around the room, I'm just saying to yourself, is there one thing, is there one thing in your life that's like, man, Lord, I got to work on that. I got to work on that. I know it. I know it's there. And I'm just not dealing with it. So all of us has one thing. There's something there. You five, she got five. I got a list right here. Well, I got six. I'll take you up seven. No, no, no. Now all of us have something. Everybody has something. Romans 8.29. Romans 8.29. Here we go. Man, we're talking about the image of God. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to his image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Did you guys hear that? So we were all made in the image of God, every single one of us. But don't be so concerned about your outside, your clothes, your hair, what people perceive. Be concerned about what's on the inside. The inside has to be dealt with, right? And your walk will be so much better when you actually deal with things. It will be. And yes, some, some people are in different places than others. We're not all on the same exact, you know what, this week I'm in Romans 9. Where are you at? Well, I'm in John. You're, you're behind three months. You know what I mean? We're not all in the same place. We're going after the same Christ, Jesus. But some may be just starting out, and some may have fallen and lost their faith and are getting back up. 
And some may be up here and be mature in the word, you know, and they may be over here. But we're all at a different place. Always keep that in mind when you look in the mirror, right? All right, folks, is there anyone in here who needs prayer? Thank you.